So I quit my job at, uh, as a recreational therapist and uh, stayed home with her for several years and then decided I needed something for me. I needed something to challenge me and um, I just thought, well, maybe I would become a financial advisor and I looked into that and realized that's not exactly what I was hoping it would be. Hello and welcome to the I Love Bookkeeping Show. I am your host, Ben Robinson, and today we've got a treat. Uh, we always try to bring guests on to the show so that we can help them because we know that the challenges that everybody faces in this industry uh, are not unique, right? We've got four or five or ten or something like that that we all face, and we all want to get through this together. And so... Before we get into today's actual recording, I want to remind you to go to ilovebookkeeping.com to check out all of the shows as well as the show notes and information about the courses that we mentioned here. And also, if you've not subscribed, please subscribe to the podcast so that you get notifications every single time that we release some stuff. We are kind of on a weekly cadence right now, but we're going to be giving out some more podcast episodes, and I want you to be notified of that. Now, Let's transition over to the fun stuff today. Uh, she is the owner of Triangle Business Solutions. She is the um, owner, I guess, of a sweet Jack Russell Terrier, uh, a five-year-old daughter, not an owner of a five-year-old daughter, although it sometimes seems like that. Uh, and she has a wonderful husband. She lives in North Carolina. Welcome to the I Love Bookkeeping Show, Heather. Thank you, Ben, for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for being here. And I don't know why in the world I didn't mention your last name, Heather Phillips. So <laughs> there we go. You're just Heather. Heather P. Remember those ads in the back of magazines? Heather P. from North Carolina says, yeah. There you go. Those are wonderful. All right. Awesome. Uh, so, Heather, uh, what made you choose to go into bookkeeping? Um. Well, I have always had a desire to help people. Um, that's kind of just always been my passion is how can I help others? Um, I used to be a recreational therapist in my, in my previous career, and so I would help um, people with disabilities get back to doing things they enjoy in life. Um, you know, how can they become active again after they had a major health change in their life? Um, and I had my daughter and then decided I wanted to stay home uh, with her, so I quit my job at, uh, as a recreational therapist. And uh stayed home with her for several years and then decided I needed something for me. I needed something to challenge me. And um, I just thought, well, maybe I would become a financial advisor. And I looked into that and realized that's not exactly what I was hoping it would be. And uh, found your uh, group, the uh, Bookkeeping Business Launch Group, and decided I would give it a shot, give it a go, and have not looked back ever since. That's awesome. And how many clients do you currently serve? I currently have four of my own and then several others that I subcontract with. Okay. okay. All right. Favorite part of your day, the thing that you get to do as you work for yourself? Um, having the freedom to, to make my schedule my own. Um, but as far as the day-to-day -day work goes, I love talking to my clients and getting to know them and um, seeing their faces light up when I tell them something maybe they didn't know or give them some insights that they might not have gained without having worked with me. Oh, that's great. That's great. Now, uh, I know we talked about this before we actually started recording, so you're going to have a, a, a pretty major life change here in a couple of weeks when you're telling them what's going to happen here in a couple of weeks. <laughs> so my daughter, who actually just turned six, actually um, last Friday she turned six, she is starting kindergarten. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so I will have hopefully more time in my hands to work on the business rather than just having time to work in the business. Okay. Okay. All I'm right. Very, well, very congratulations. <laughs> yeah. I bet that you are. Yes. Okay. I remember, uh, I remember those days. My youngest just went off to college. So yeah. And, uh, has a birthday really close to your daughter's, oh. but anyway, I digress. Okay. So you're going to have this time. And, uh, so that's the kind of favorite part of your day is the freedom and everything. But so what's been a big challenge to you, you know, as you've built this business up to four clients, plus the ones that you work with on a contract basis, like what's been a challenge? Because we want to be real here. Um, the biggest challenge is, and I know you always say it at the beginning, pick a niche, pick a niche, pick a niche. And mm -hmm. everyone does the whole, let me just get clients. Let me get some mm -hmm. money on the table, get food on the table. Um, and as I did that, it worked well, but I realized my brain was stretched in way too many direct directions. I have 
right now a manufacturing client, which is super challenging and detail and lots of moving parts. I have a jewelry making client. I have a e-commerce eBay seller client and I have a photography client. Um, and some of the clients I've subcontracted with have been realtors and, um, photographers and, um, other retail type stores. So my brain was stretched in a lot of different directions as far as having to know those nuances of all the different industries and all the different tasks that went into that. So I've learned firsthand that I need to focus my brain power on a certain area of expertise. Um, Okay. And that's kind of where I'm at is diving really into how do I really, really learn that niche? And when I'm talking to clients sound like I've been there, done that, and I know their world so that I'm not talking a different language as my potential clients. Okay. Okay. All right. So I know that we are going to kind of focus and drill down on that here today. So uh, tell, tell us the niche that you have picked. Uh, real estate professionals, hopefully ideally real estate um, investors, because there's a lot of different sub specialties you could do within real estate, but I'm thinking real estate investors. Okay, great. All right. We've had a couple of people on the show who that's their specialty. We have Dave Rice. Uh, we have Ben Day, who was the very first. Um, and I know that there's probably somebody else in there that, that has that too. That seems to be common Kelly one. Kelly is, I think Kelly's the one's looking for doing that. Kelly Moreland. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're exactly right. Thank you. Just recorded that a couple of weeks ago. I should remember it, right? All of them. Okay. So one thing, one question that I have first is that your first four clients that you listed, none of those were real estate. You mentioned one that was a contractor or the one that you serve as a contractor. So why real estate? Um, I've had actually, I didn't go into, I've had several clients in the past that have been real estate professionals. Um, one I worked with, cleaned him up and did um, work on a monthly basis and loved him. He was such a fun client. Um, but he ended up moving out of the country and we tried to make it work across the pond, but, um, just decided he needed somebody more local to him for, you know, different roles in different countries. Um, and I had another property management client I've worked with in the past. I just cleaned him up. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've had other real estate clients and I enjoyed working with them. It's just currently I don't have any, um, but I've always had a desire to learn real estate because I have this crazy dream of one day to actually get into real estate investing myself um, if I ever right. have the opportunity. So I kind of feel like I'm doing two things at once by learning the industry so that I can work with those clients really well and also eventually learning the industry so that I could take part as well. Okay. okay. All right. So it's not a previous life you were a realtor or anything? No, like that would that. be amazing no. if that was the case. I'd feel like I'd, I'd have yeah. a leg up already. <laughs> Well, if that were the case, you probably wouldn't be going after that industry. That's usually <laughs> what we see. So, uh, okay. All right. I got you there. So just one observation here is that, you know, you're going to be kind of wading into the water. You're not going to be diving head first because you don't have a lot of experience with that industry. I mean, you have some and that's good. Um, but you may get into it and realize that it's not a good fit. You may get into it and realize it's a wonderful fit. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we always talk about, you know, sometimes a niche finds us and we don't find a niche. But in this case, you're kind of saying, I'm finding my niche and it's going to be real estate. And that's great. Uh, but let's talk about like how, you know, you really get into it and how you understand it. So kind of tee up the, 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 the main challenge and what we want to address here today. Uh, the main challenge is I would love to, and I, I know we've covered this, but in the past in several different t uh, times we've chatted, but. I'd love to just do a deep dive into how do I really find out about my niche? How do I research them to know where they like to congregate? Where, um, you know, what, what, oh Lord, of course I lost my words. <laughs> um, what are the words they use to describe their work? What, um, mm -hmm. you know, sort of revenue potential do they have to know how to make sure I'm not outpricing myself for their, um, their industry? 
Okay. Sorry. All right. All right. So let's just do a let's just do a brainstorming session right now. Okay. So let's just talk about all the different ways in which you can do that. Because first, you're very uh, wise to be indoctrinating yourself in their industry. Uh, it's like you know walking into a different country, speaking a different language. You want to understand so that you can ask you know donde está el baño, dos cervezas por favor. Yeah, exactly. That's about the end of my Spanish right there. <laughs> uh, but you know the important things you want to get the lay of the land. So that's really good. So let's just kind of walk like how do you go and find out more about your niche? How do you learn how to speak the language? So first and foremost is through our community, right? Through through people who are already in this. And one of the things that I've found about our communities and just bookkeepers, professionals in general, is that they're very giving and they realize that this is not about competition. It's about collaboration. And so, you know, the people and they've been on this podcast here, we talk about, you know, Dave Rice, uh, Kelly Moreland, uh, Ben Day, all three of those are in your industry and they have been on our show. So that would be a great and probably the best starting point for you is to say, hey, let me buy you a dinner or let me buy you a glass of wine or a virtual one or whatever. And or when you're at one of our meetups. And really, really understand, like ask them specific questions about the industry. What do they like? What do they don't like? Um, what have they found to be the challenges, the hot points, the hot buttons? So that's a great place to start. And, you know, I always think now, and I mentioned this in some lessons I was recording yesterday, I don't think what I think who. Like, who has already done this? Why should I have to reinvent the wheel? Tell me the shortcut way. So I'll, I'll spend $2,000 on a program that's going to help me cut the time in half and save 10 times that to get the quick effect. So the same thing for you. So that's the very first place to start. And you could probably just say end of show right here, and that would be sufficient for you. Okay. Now, we all know that there's no substitute for experience. There's no substitute for being belly to belly with one of the people that's in your industry or with hundreds of people who are in this industry. So I believe you said that as you, as your daughter goes off to um, uh, kindergarten, I was about to say college, that's my daughter. <laughs> as your daughter goes off to kindergarten, uh, you're going to be focusing on some more networking events, yes, right? I'm Physical networking. Go and work, um, go meet up with a lot of local um, networking events in Raleigh. And I've been involved with them virtually um, on Facebook. I ju- And I've done a little bit of in-person networking, but I really want to rev up the time I spend going and talking with people. Um, and there's a very active real estate investors group in uh, tr- the Triangle. I think it's called Triangle Real Estate uh, Investors Association. So there's a very strong, active one down here as well. Oh, well, good. All right. So there's no substitute, again, for getting in front of them. So we talked about going and getting in front of other people, other bookkeeping professionals who are in this niche. OK, uh, the very best place, though, to get, you know, to hear it directly from the potential clients is exactly where you're talking about right there. So that would be something that I would be in a target rich environment, as Goose said in Top Gun or no, that was Maverick. By the way, I just watched the new trailer for the new Top Gun that's coming out in 2020. And I'm psyched. <laughs> Sidebar. Uh, so really, that's that's one thing. I would want to find a target-rich environment. Where do they hang out? If you can get there, if you can just be a fly on the wall and listen to them. So that is another – That there is no substitute for being directly in front of them. Okay? okay. And being totally honest with them about why you're there, what your intentions are. But don't go into these networking events – thinking, oh, I'm going to get a bunch of clients oh, no. from this. Going in there thinking, I'm doing, number one, research, and number two, I'm going there to create value, to give out advice. And eventually, it will turn. It will You will get clients from it. Uh, but it is a long-term investment. It's not something you're going to go to and get a client. And if you do, consider yourself to be fortunate. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that is one way. So, uh, and, and we'll continue to brainstorm, Heather, but you, as you know, there is no like a silver bullet. There's no like, Hey, go to this website and you'll be totally indoctrinated. It is a process. It is something that is lifelong. Um, when, when I was working with dentists, you know, at first, I, you know, and I stumbled upon my niche and I didn't even know about niche. I didn't even know how to spell niche. Right. I thought that it was some French word, <laughs> which it is, by the way. Um, but you know, you've got to create a, a mentality that this is going to be an, this is going to be a total, um, you know, thing, but the, the sequence of doing this, like talking to people who are already in this industry, First, and then when you go to these networking events, at least you have a lay of the land. At least you can ask again, where's the bathroom and can I have two beers, please? Uh, that's, that's important. Um, the other thing that I would do is I would find out 
uh, the industry associations. Uh, so you mentioned like the uh, meeting group that you're going to be the networking group, the triangle real estate investors. Mm -hmm. So there are probably chapters of that or something like that in your area. Other ones, there's national associations. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do in terms of the website, right? Going to their website, looking at the industry association. What are they talking about? Just indoctrinating yourself. Like if we were to do a Google search, you know, I could, I could type in right now on, on my computer. I won't do it just for sound purposes, but real estate investor association. Uh, who are the major ones that are in there? And by the way, that's a question that I would ask of Ben Day and, and Dave Rice and Kelly. Like who are these, who are the people, who are the associations? Um, reading their, just reading their website, reading their blog, reading their social media posts, following them, stalking them, all these different things. And there's probably two or three associations out there that have your target market in mind. So that's another place that's not as effective as talking to another bookkeeping professional or actually talking to your client. But again, this is just like me listening to a a, uh, I was about to say tape on Spanish, but you know, me listening to a recording of Spanish while I'm driving, it's just kind of getting my brain more indoctrinated into their world. Does that make yeah, sense? Exactly. Yep. Okay. Um, also the, a great place to do this cause I, uh, they probably have conventions. Okay. And so what I like to do is to look at their convention topics. What are they talking about? What's a recurring theme? So usually they have recordings or they have a syllabus of the conventions that they have had. And if you see a theme that continues to recur, especially as it relates to dollars and cents in that business, mm -hmm. that's something that you want to really uh, perk your ears up and pay attention to. Um, because if they're continuing to talk about it year to year and it's related to something that you can help out with, and that's something that you really want to dive deep on. And that's something that as you start to develop your value, value proposition with real estate investors, that's going to be, um, key to you doing okay. that. Um, and again, this is kind of a quick hit brainstorm session, right? Just kind of getting into it. Um, but that's, so that's another place. Also, um, who are the thought leaders in this, right? There's probably, you know, a dozen, half dozen, I don't know how many thought leaders, podcasts, you know, what we're doing right here. Like I'm considered a thought leader in bookkeeping. Um, if you knew the thoughts that were going ahead in my head, sometimes you would not, <laughs> not want to be part of that. No, but, uh, you know, there's, there's probably people that are in podcasts that are talking about this. Um, they have websites, they have, uh, articles that they are publishing. They have courses that they're putting out there. What are the courses about? Again, always just it, taking in every single thing that you can about this industry. Um, another thing that I would do is that I would invest in uh, risk management association, RMAs, uh, uh, profitability studies uh, for this industry. Uh, this is basically you can just type in RMA uh, profit. I can't remember exactly. It's a risk management association. You have to fumble it around their website. I'll try to put a link on the show notes here to it. Uh, but you can drill down and what they will give you is a report. That's, uh, the profitability, the numbers, the important metrics for this industry, okay. uh, based upon, res um, what, what this is, RMA is a repository of banks who, when they get loan applications, they submit the financial statements anonymously. And so it gives us kind of, uh, what are, what are average, you know, cash balances? What's the average profitability, um, based upon size, location, and a bunch of other things. So this one won't be as insightful, but in terms of like drilling down to the numbers, it'll help you in the future because you can use this to say, how well is my client doing? So when we start talking about benchmarking, when we start talking about forecasting, this is something that you can use to help you. But again, it just helps to get your brain going into understanding their industry and their niche. Um, so that is a great place right there. Um, so those are just some, some like quick hits. Uh, also, I would want to know what are the books? What are the other resources that they are learning from? Uh, what, so if I were to go to Amazon and type in, you know, real estate investing, uh, who are, who are they listening to again, kind of going back to the thought leaders on that. But if there's a book or two or eight that I can get and digest on their industry, uh, I want to do that. Okay. I've actually got a stack yeah. of books sitting here. <laughs> Some of them okay. I just need to have time to read. So yes, yes. Yeah. 
So go in there and just start, you know, re- reading them as drudgerous as that may be, you know, and again, these are like reading the books and, and getting RMA stuff. Uh, these are, these are secondary or tertiary to the primary two mechanisms. And that's talking to people in the industry so that you can talk to people who are, excuse me, talking to bookkeeping professionals in the industry and then talking to the actual people. Yeah, exactly. Right? Okay. Um, now, do you know anybody that's in this industry? I, I have a, a property manager that I actually use for my uh, rental property that I own. Um, and I thought about reaching out to him. He's just super busy right now. Um, but mm-hmm. I thought about reaching out to him to kind of network um, to see who he okay. knows. He's actually down in the eastern part of the state because our house is in the eastern part of the state. But um, Down east. Yeah. So I knew, well. I knew a realtor that I really loved working with, but she sadly passed away. So she would have been a wonderful resource to talk with. But um, but I can always reach out. And I have a couple of neighbors that know some realtors that I might be able to reach out to and kind of pick their brains a little bit and learn the industry from them. And that way it's kind of like a genuine, you know, it's more, more of an organic connection rather than just calling somebody out of the blue and saying, hey, will you chat with me? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Using your network, yakety yak, as we talk about here a lot, that's the easiest or the simplest way in which to do that. Uh, but just to be specific, you're going after real estate investors, not realtors and that sort of thing, right? Yeah, so okay. I'm trying to think. I don't know. I do not know any direct real estate investors right now. Okay. And, and that's fine. Um, you know, obviously a best case scenario is that you have, uh, you know, just thinking back to, um, uh, some of the podcasts that we have done and some people that I've spoken with, um, Annette, who was a dental hygienist and now she works with dentists. That was a, it was a perfect migration, right? She had experience. She already spoke the language. She's actually been down in the mouth. <laughs> so she has an intimate understanding of that industry. So she went into dentistry because she wasn't totally put off by it. Uh, for you, you're kind of starting new. So you're starting from, you know, uh, so it's going to be a huge, steep learning curve mm-hmm. initially. But again, it's a short term sacrifice, lifetime of benefit for all this effort that you're going to be putting into it. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, so you bring up a really good point, Heather. You're going to speak to people who are kind of in shoulder industries, people who touch real estate investors. So one question I would ask myself is that who already has, and this kind of gets more into marketing, but who already has these eyeballs in front of them? Who already has their attention? It's hard enough for me to get your attention, but if somebody else already has your attention, it's easier for me to go through them. So think about it in the dating world, right? If I were to walk up to uh, a a woman in a bar and ask them, you know, for to have a drink or to chat or whatever, you know, I'm probably going to get shot down, even with my debonair good looks and you know charm. Um, <clears throat> we digress. Uh, but if I were, you know, if a friend were there and they introduced me, now I've got a much higher chance of communicating and getting results uh, because it's been with somebody who has a trusted, you know, advice, they're a trusted person. They, but, so I would think, you know, who are the people that they deal with? And just off the top of my head, you know, they have to have financing. They're huge into finance. Yeah. I was thinking mortgage lenders and realtors yeah. and um, contractors for people who, you know, do reno on houses, um, yes. insurance law um, attorneys that work in that industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. All of those, you know, those are great people. So they're going to give you different perspectives, you know. So if you're speaking with an attorney that she specializes with real estate investors, she's going to give you a different perspective kind of from the legal world, not kind of, but from the legal world of how she sees this industry and the challenges that she faces. So all of these different people that have them and as, as their clients, you want to get in front of them so that you can learn. And also you're planting seeds for referral marketing down the mm-hmm. road. Yep. You know, being able to, and the best way and the easiest way to get in front of somebody is to give them a referral. So when you have a real estate investor client and they're like, by golly, I need to find a a real estate investor attorney here in the triangle area. You're like, I know one that's perfect and introduce them. And that's a great place for you to get in and, you know, chalk one up for Heather in that column. And then you can go and um, uh, pick their brain even more because you earned that right. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um. You know, so, I mean, those are the primary ways. I mean, it's just a grassroots effort, Heather. Um, it's, it's, but, you know, the, the most effective thing is being in front of them and asking them and asking them good questions. Like, what are the challenges you face? Like, if you could, I love the, if you could ma- wave a, a magic wand, 
What, what would you change about your business? What would you get help with? What would you not do? What's the gain that you would have? What's the pain that you would avoid? What's the jobs or the functions in your business that you would no longer do? You know, it comes back to the jobs, pains, and gains because what you want out of all this, Heather, is a value proposition, also known as an offer. Mm-hmm. So it's not an elevator pitch, although an elevator pitch is part of the offer. But what you want is that based upon everything that they've told you, the gains that they want to achieve in their business, the pains they want to avoid, and the jobs or the roles and the functions in their business that they no longer want to do, out of this is born your value proposition. So that when you're speaking to one, you say a sentence or two, and their ears perk up because you're speaking that Yeah, it hits home for them. Ooh, I need that. Yeah. 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 Because nobody wants our bookkeeping. I'm sorry to say that, you know, nobody wants that. They want the result, right? Nobody cares if we reconcile. Nobody cares if we have bank rules. Nobody cares if we use QuickBooks online for the most part, right? Some people do, but uh, most people, they just want the result. They don't want to have to do it. They want to make more money. They want to be at home. But diving into the levels of that, you know, why is that important? Okay, well, why is that important? I mean, you're acting like a reporter here and you're getting to the root cause. You know, yeah, everybody's going to tell you, I want to make more money. I want to spend more time with my family. Okay, that's the surface, right? But that's not really what they want. What they really want is that they want to be able to rub it in their brother-in-law's face at Thanksgiving because they're making more money now. And, you know, all these different things that get down to the deep psychological yeah. roots well, of why, why do we do that? things Why do you do. want that? Why do you want that? Yep, exactly. That's it. And so really kind of focusing in on that and not just taking the surface level. I mean, you can't come in with your value proposition and go, Hey, my services let you at Thanksgiving rub it in your brother in law's face, right? It doesn't <laughs> let you do that. that a little bit. <laughs> but the surf, but, but the level right above yeah. that, right? Uh, because the, everybody, you know, and keep this in mind, um, just to kind of boil this down and wrap this up. Uh, everything that we do in life is based upon to feel better about ourselves. Or to feel important, feel better about ourselves or to feel important. So you, me, the real estate investors that you will be serving, everything that they do comes back to that. So ask yourself this question. How does this make them feel important? How does this make them feel better about themselves? Or how does this make them feel less important? How does this make them feel like they are a piece of crap? Right. So be thinking in those terms, right? And 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 that's kind of going to help you with the questions that you form. Okay. And that's one thing that I'll tell you: um, form really good questions for asking them. You know, form really good questions so that when you're in front of a real estate investor, that you can extrapolate from them good information. And so a great place to start with that again is talking to people who are in this industry because I don't know this industry very well. But other people do and ask them. So ask the Ben Days and the Dave Rices, hey, what are good questions that I should be asking them? Okay. Yeah, that's a really good. Yeah, because I don't want to go in there and be like, so how's your day? Yeah, I want to have a little bit more pointed questions that, that, yeah, are fruitful for the conversation for them and for me as well. Absolutely. 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 Um, So get in there and listen. You know, all the other things we talk about, listen and don't just listen, practice active listening. Uh, everybody Google that and understand exactly what active listening is and what it is not. Um, so th- these are just all different things, but you know, it's, it's a lifelong journey. It's not something that tomorrow you're going to be able to check a box or anything like that. But over time, and you know, I think back upon my career over a dozen serving dentists, um, what I knew at first and then what I knew at the end, it was not a PhD. It was a post doctorate degree with all the information that I had on that industry. And when I started, you know, I was like Luke Skywalker when he was in the land speeder and he didn't know anything about using the force. And when I got done, I was like him when he was slaying Darth Vader. Yeah. It just father. takes time to get in there and learn and know and grow as you, as you learn more. So yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So, and when you get that very first one, I'll tell you, don't worry about the fee. Worry, do things that you that they're not paying you to do. Play Columbo, diving into the numbers and then behind the numbers and then behind what's behind the numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's what I did with my first dental client, right? I probably effectively was making about minimum wage per hour, but I was getting a an indoctrination into that industry. And, you know, once you get one and being able to see the numbers that are behind there, um, 
that's that's and actually doing it that's when the real learning starts okay in terms of the x's and o's yeah and i've found that with other clients that i've worked with too is that when i'm actually in the books and i actually have the client i i learn so much faster than the crawling speed of when you're just for just trying to research but when you're actually in the books talking with clients figuring out what their numbers are why they you know why is this number this why is that number that you actually really really learn a lot more um because your money says a lot about you. It really does. You, you know, where mm. you spend your money, where your money comes from. So it's kind of yep. a cool, insightful thing to be able to look yep. at that with your clients. Absolutely. I heard a guy, Andy Stanley, say, you know, if you want to learn something about a person, look at their check register and look at their calendar. Yeah. Because that's what's important to them. Exactly. So awesome. Well, Heather, I hope that this has been a little bit of help to you today. Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate it very much. Okay, you're welcome. Now, if you want to find out more about Heather, you go to trianglebusinesssolutions.com. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Triangle. Yes, sir. What the? <laughs> we were doing I'm so southern, well up sorry. to this point. I'm southern. I know. <laughs> I am too. It's funny because I, yesterday I was filming and I, I, I shave about once a week and it's all gray now. So when I shave, I look so much younger. And uh, I don't know why I don't do that, but just calling me sir there made me feel old. So now I'm just playing with <laughs> All right, Heather. Well, thanks for playing along on the I Love Bookkeeping show. And uh, I'd love to hear a follow-up, you know, in six months or to a year about how you're getting into this industry and how you're, you know, indoctrinating yourself and the results that you're achieving. Absolutely. Well, I'll see you at the intensives because I'm going yeah. to them. So we'll catch up. Awesome. Glad to have you there. Listen, if you would like to hear more great conversations just like today's, then I want you to head on over to ilovebookkeeping.com. There, you're going to find all of the shows, the notes, and some other great goodies that we have for you there. Now, if you'd like to be a guest on the I Love Bookkeeping show, there is a link that says Be a Guest. Go in there, and we'll walk you through the process of getting on the show. And finally, to discover more about our programs, go to the courses page on the ilovebookkeeping.com site. There you have it, another great episode of I Love Bookkeeping. Thank you for being a proud listener, and thank you for being a bookkeeping professional. Enjoy the rest of your week. I love bookkeeping. Ah! Here's a little shout to all my friends working hard at keeping the books. You want to change your life, you want to grow that biz, it's not as hard as it looks. Be a money guide, a profit coach, step up your game and see. You'll be working less and making more, and that's the way it's going to be.